It felt like the alien cosmic realm was very present in my experience. It's not something that I was like, I'm going to do that again. And you talk about the dark side of spirituality. When you're trusting a facilitator, a space yeah. holder, a shaman, a healer with something so sacred and vulnerable, it's not something to take lightly. I've experienced being in situations where I have been unsafe and violated. And I've heard stories from so many women where similar things are happening to them in these healing sessions. Can you talk a little bit about your situation and what happened to you? We are taking people on these journeys and all over the world from like spending a week with vampires to <laughs> investigating the miracles of Jesus Christ, like all these really deep things. I get very bored with the, just the love and light spirituality. We are on planet Earth with a full spectrum of energy that we're working with. So I want to explore it all. I was so prepared to grill you. <laughs> <laughs> so Sky, yeah. are you a witch? Ever since I wrote my goals down with the pen, my dreams and reality of both them blending in. I just hope that in the end, my dad don't accept me. You know what I just noticed? We're both wearing the same colors, and that happens almost every episode. You're just so tuned in with your guests. Whoa. Yeah, that's cool. That's so cool. Yeah, we look good. We look good. <laughs> we got the gold and the chopsticks. Uh -huh. <laughs> the chopsticks are a vibe. We rock it. This is like a uh, Nicki Minaj rap that I like. That's what mm -hmm. actually made me get them. But she's like, I went and caught the chopsticks, put them in my bun just to pop. I'm always in the top box seats. The gossip. How many of them could have did it with finesse? Now everybody like Sky really is the best. You couldn't be me playing checkers, playing chess. But oh, I'm going to turn around and beat my chest because I'm King Kong. I've been off, Laura Bincroft. There goes Sky Life, like the Prince off. <laughs> Amen. Thank baby. you. That you was were fantastic. just laughing on your 30th birthday last week, and I got to witness it. You did. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. <laughs> it's been a fun little thing I'm learning. So good. So let me just introduce people to Sky. I mean, a lot of people will probably already know who you are if they're in this world or in this community. You create very like vice esque vice like videos where you're taking people on these journeys and all over the world and it's always around wellness or spirituality from like spending a week with vampires to <laughs> investigating the miracles of jesus christ like all these really deep things mm -hmm. i first met you when you were like I was young. A, a kiddo i was a baby <laughs> i know my early days in la totally and i remember you're like you were i think working at buzzfeed at the time and like yeah. really interested in like getting into youtube and doing this and you were just like so eager yeah i had my six year anniversary of the channel in march and at the beginning it was just because i had all these ideas that mm. wanted to come through me and i was excited about making videos that I was curious about and I didn't really in the beginning understand how it would become a full-time thing. I felt like that was a dream, like, oh, if I could do this as a job, as a full-time mm. career, that would be awesome. But mm. I didn't understand at the time, like, how that would all happen. I was just making videos that I was passionate about. So it was a side hustle for two years until Same. I transitioned, yeah. yeah, into this being what I live and breathe and do. Um, <laughs> I think people don't realize, right? Like yeah. how much work it takes to be a creator. <laughs> if you're going to do it right. Totally. And that's why sometimes I don't even want to waste my time. I hate to say it that way, but people will come up and ask for advice and I can just tell they're not serious or they're not ready. Right. Because I'm like, this is not just a fun thing that you do where it's like so easy and you have, you know, there's like teams. Yeah. We have three cameras here. We have someone operating them. We've got a team of editors. We have, and I'm saying we, because you do the same. Yeah. Where, you know, we have like, um, marketing plans and people and, and like meetings and then there's also like what's the best way to make money from all this because mm -hmm. it's not sustainable otherwise yeah and there's just like so many things to think about that keep the machine running yeah where it is like i came from a background of like tv news where our budgets were massive mm -hmm. and we could do anything and we'd be like let's jump from a helicopter and do that and like, okay and like there's a budget for it you know yeah it's hardcore entrepreneurship Mm. It really is. It's really learning as you go, problem solving. It's the grit. It's the commitment, the devotion day in and day out. But for me, that's what makes it fun. I mean, I think that part of why it's so rewarding is because it's challenging. I, I came from 
TV news background as well, but I never made it to the point where I was doing that as a career. I studied television mm. news in college. Right. And that was what I thought was going to be my career path. So, oh my God, I could totally imagine you as like an anchor. It's happening I, in like some other dimension. In you know, an right? alternate reality, yeah. I was a news anchor and I actually did that and was training for that. And I feel like that was what I went to school for. Like I literally chose the college that I went to because of their broadcast journalism program. And it's a fantastic program if you want to go into television news reporting. But I had the whole awakening and epiphany and just I had a complete like... Mm. Yeah, just I felt really unlike myself when I was playing that role um, and I was really depressed and really anxious and angry. And I was like, why does this why do I feel so unlike myself? Because I felt like I was trying to play the part of the newscaster and oh, like dress so a certain way and talk a certain way. And the voice, the voice, the reporter voice. The repo it took me years oh, to deprogram God, the reporter voice. Oh, me too. It was so robotic, and me it was too. like my brothers would make fun of me. They're like, "Why the? Why my are you talking like too. that?" Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and now it's like people know that that is so fake. It's yeah. not something that like younger generations can even take seriously. Well, you know what's interesting too? Like, you know how you walked in and you saw my Emmys when you first walked in? Yeah, and you didn't say anything about like the YouTube plaque because you probably have the same one. My friends who are my age or a little older or like in that region, five re five years, give or take, they're like, whoa, Emmys. A anyone who's like younger or their kids, if they come over, don't even see the Emmys. They're just like, is that a YouTube plan? <laughs> yeah. You know, like it's so funny to see, like it's really not yeah. what it was. No, no. But the Emmys are epic. I mean, they're pretty amazing. They're pretty right? cool. <laughs> I was like, whoa, I want one of those. <laughs> <laughs> right now, all around me, there are the frequencies of abundance and inner peace. You can have that and more. So take a second and let me tell you about Quantum Upgrade. Let's talk about like the Quantum Upgrade dashboard so people can see sort of how it works. We use a very complicated, sophisticated system, which is, as far as we know, the most powerful source out there for quantum energy on Earth. You can pick from like, I think 26, 28 different frequencies now that we have. Inner peace, which you could leverage at night, for example. A lot of people do that. Yeah. We have the Olympic performance. We have even something like weight management. We have the abundance, prosperity. The service actually starts like within five minutes the energy you, you will notice it starts ramping up in the dashboard you can select the Hawkins level for the day and pick between a level from 500 to I think like 1200 or something like that just start low you know go on 600 because it's not about faster stronger more powerful best is what feels good to you like yeah. men's booster women's booster inflammation support testosterone booster it's activating that testosterone actually can increase again and five of these studies and it showed in 46 percent to 100 percent acceleration in wound healing but we do have a free trial that we want to offer all your listeners so and quote frankly you get 15 day free trial sometimes it can set the stage for the thing that you need to do next but you need to get this first yeah absolutely i'm super grateful for that foundation that was built because i learned such a strong solid foundation of journalistic ethics of storytelling, shooting, editing, reporting. Mm. Um, I just learned, like, I, I really cherish that, that time in that era. Mm. Um, yeah, I just look back and I, like, have compassion for that girl who was just trying to figure it out and thought she had to be a certain way. And I feel like, yeah, it's where we're living in uh, an era now where you can create whatever you want. Like there's infinite possibility around what you can do um, with the tools that we have at our fingertips. Like it, this is the era of the thriving artist. The starving artist era is over. Ooh, yeah, it's so yeah. true. And there's so many different ways to do that now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's talk about some of the stories you've done. Mm -hmm. So I'll go down a list here. So you spent 24 hours with a Satanist. Yeah. What was that like? Actually, it was it was a bit longer than 24 hours, but the mm -hmm. context of the video of when we filmed was like a 24 wow. hour pocket. And I went with um, a YouTube friend. Did I introduce you, by the way? I don't know. I don't. For some know. reason, in my head, I have a recollection yeah. that I introduced you to Dakota. To Dakota, because I know you are friends with Dakota. Yeah. But also, I know Blue is friends with Dakota. Yes. So it, was it either I through met you Blue or Blue? 
through, yeah. and we did an ayahuasca ceremony in Mexico right. with Dakota. Yes. Okay. Yes. And I remember hearing him on her podcast and I was like, oh my wow. God, I need to go meet a Satanist. And yeah. I, I just, I've followed Dakota for years <laughs> and I was just a fan of him and like the he's gonzo so journalism cool. kind of vibe. And he's just such a vibe. And, and so we were YouTube friends, you know, getting to know each other over the internet. And then he invited me to come to Catamaco, Mexico, which is the witchcraft capital of Mexico. No mm. tourists go to this town. It's um, it's in um, Veracruz. Um, and he invited me to come and hang out with his friend Enrique, who is like the Satanist lord of the town. <laughs> <laughs> you were laughing in the video too, and you're like, yeah. hey, laughing, but it's nervous laughter. <laughs> it is nervous laughter because I was freaking out. Like, okay, I really wanted to go. Because, you know, as a journalist, it's just like, oh, my God, this is exciting. But I'm also terrified um, because I don't know what this means. And he also has this crazy underground lair yeah. that we went into with a giant statue of the devil. With like a um, giant, with a penis, giant right? penis, yeah. yeah. It's crazy. And the land that he owns, he brings some of the biggest politicians and celebrities in Mexico to do spring equinox um, ceremony with like goat sacrifice it's like the real actually. deal so they do yeah. that in order to maintain their fame their power their money all that i guess i don't entirely know what those ceremonies entail and like i think what he they said mean. that in the video he yeah was like, people come to me for health for yeah. wealth for love for yeah people he has people going to him for for everything to curse their ex-husband like you Jeez. will see in the lair there's like photos of people and so I, when I went into it, I don't, I will never participate in that kind of magic. I'm with you, yeah. I just have a very strong boundary on um, participating. But as a documentarian, yeah. the opportunity to observe and to tell a story about it was um, an opportunity I couldn't say no to. Like, if I look at the end of my life, I want to look back and be yeah. like, wow, like, I went there, I did that. And with spirituality, I feel like, for me personally, I can just, I get very bored with like just the love and light spirituality. God, and it's, I love that you said that. It's just not also real. Like there's just, there's, we are on planet earth with a full spectrum of energy that we're working with. So I want to, um, I want to explore it all and I want to know how to hold myself and carry my own energy and have my own energetic boundaries in any situation. I was so prepared to grill you <laughs> about that. Yeah. But I'm so glad you said that because like, Yes, this whole, the reason why I think I stay away so much from like spirituality, and then it's so cool that I notice, um, not from spirituality, but from spiritual groups. And then I notice when I come to events, whether it's your birthday or if I go to like uh, an event here or there, people will randomly be like, hey, what's your YouTube or what's your Instagram? And they're like, oh, I'm already following you. Mm -hmm. And that's such a good feeling because I'm like, oh, they probably saw some of the stuff that I did and I love that. But I still um, have this like, um, this tenderness that I feel where I'm, where it's not all love and light and, you know, drinking chai lattes and doing your Kundalini, like spirituality is deep, dark things you don't want to look at. Yeah. And it's like the duality. And I actually love what mm -hmm. um, Dakota said in that video that you guys did together. I even wrote it down. He wrote, I accept the fact that the darkness is an inherent part of the light, Yeah, you know? And so uh, it's not, Obviously, there are really harmful karmic ramifications of participating in something like that. Yeah. Like you said, I don't want to participate, yeah. but I'll watch it. Right. Um, <clears throat> I would, you know, never do some of those things because it's like it comes no. back to you tenfold. Totally. You and know? I asked Enrique about this in the video. I asked him, so what does this mean for you karmically that you are facilitating, participating in this magic? And his perspective is that it's not him, it's people coming to him that have the karma. And he's just oh. an open channel to facilitate whatever they're coming to him for and it's not his karma. So that's his viewpoint. I don't know Interesting. if I have that viewpoint, but even when we were with him, we did rituals, and part but it wasn't from the perspective of, it was more so to experience. And I had this thing around, I don't want to participate. And then somehow I got pushed into, <laughs> you know, doing it in the yeah. video. And, but I, I, and I'll tell you the backstory of this because I really energetically prepared myself for this trip. And I worked with, um, I worked with somebody to prepare myself energetically. Mm. And she kind of went in the, the quantum and had our souls, like we were having a conversation and 
what we kind of agreed on that this was going to be for document documentary purposes and that it would be a bit of the theatrics to like show but it wasn't um yeah, there was there was no like ill malevolent intent with anything that we did. It was just kind of to witness and observe, you know, the kind of stuff he's working with. But I I was terrified going into it, coming out of it. I felt like, oh, that was nothing. I love that. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't it did not energetically impact me. Um, it felt it was actually like you see the video. It's kind of like borderline parody. It was like kind of funny to me that like mm. I think everything and Dakota talks about this is like a placebo like it's the power that our mind gives something is the power that it has mm. um and yeah we also did a beautiful ceremony with a group of of the witches that study with him and the ceremony that we did was beautiful like beautiful um sisterhood female empowerment ceremony um and nothing dark about it it was beautiful like just the energy was they were basically just blessing me with like protection for my journey mm. see that's what's interesting is like yeah. it's with anything in life right it's like scary and then you look at it and that's the whole point of shadow work it's just yes. look at it move through it until you can look at it and be like that was nothing exactly and i felt after that experience very prepared to go into other energetic situations mm. and know that i'm protected and um, I have my tools that I use and I have my ways of navigating these spaces where I can be an observer, be neutral. Um, I think it's in the neutrality that there's a lot of protection. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what about, because, okay, so you have a video and I, I kind of broke it down into like three parts. And you talk about the dark side of spirituality. Mm -hmm. The first one, you talk about like gurus and not giving your power away. And I remember, I think it might have been the art of living that you were at. And I remember you mm -hmm. called me after and you were like, I didn't like it because there was <laughs> photos of him everywhere. And that's so like a dictator. And I remember, <laughs> but you also were in a different place, I think, yeah, back yeah, then than for you sure. are now. For right? sure. Like there's a lot of yeah, growth. But I mean, totally. I'm sure you still believe in some of that. But yeah. my perspective on that, having worked with so many gurus, is that actually their image itself ha carries a frequency. Totally. Itself. So yeah. they put them there not to be like, worship me, but it's like, I'm... I can't be here with you physically. I'm in India right now, but mm -hmm. my, mm -hmm. I, it's like a consecration of them. Yeah. Yeah. It's not that I disagree with having a teacher or a guru and, you know, in Eastern traditions, many of these lineages, that's very, and very important part is to have a guru and teacher to learn from. So that's beautiful. I think that it often just gets very abused and especially in more new age spiritual cults mm -hmm. that form and a, abuse of power is present, which we've seen so many times. It's just something that I want people to be aware of. Um, and you see so many documentaries now coming out, like Twin Flames Universe. I don't know if you saw Ooh, that. Oh, no. What's that about? Oh, my God. It's just about a cyber cult. Um, uh. And just the level of exploitation and abuse that can happen in these spiritual communities due to a guru that is actually just like a sociopath abusing their power. It's it's very alarming that that's happening um so much more than we realize and i just want to make sure people are aware when they start on their spiritual path and they're seeking support and they're seeking answers and they're seeking help and maybe in a vulnerable state to not put your power outside of yourself especially if you're like really new to spirituality and you're mm -hmm. just like figuring it out you know totally and it's like where do you go yeah um what about spiritual bypassing i like this one a lot yeah, like spiritual bypassing in the sense that we're kind of just brushing off like very hardcore real things that are happening. And I feel like that is something that is very present in the community. And I mean, I'm guilty of it too. Like sometimes I don't want to deal with something. I don't want to look at something or even something I'm going through that I'm like, okay, I'm just going to... Love like, and light. <laughs> put, yeah, like I'm just going to... Yes, love and light my way to healing. But that's not how it works. Um and yeah, I think that's something to, to be aware of on this path. Um, and the spiritual path is like the most wild journey of self-discovery is really what I found. Um, and it takes looking at the parts of ourselves that we're really deeply uncomfortable with, which is the shadow work that's bringing the unconscious to the conscious. And that's been something I've been navigating. Yeah, mm. I don't have all the answers. It's something I'm living and navigating how to work with. Do you feel like your whole family is kind of like, you know how like sometimes somebody in the family becomes a vegan or something and then the whole family starts to follow? Do you feel like your family's becoming more spiritual just watching your journey? 
or more open. Yeah. What's really interesting is my younger brother had started having his own spiritual experience and awakening of his own and his path unfolding. And it was so cool to witness. And then for us to be able to speak the same language and to talk about it and to be on the same wavelength. And um, I think that happened. I think he was impacted by my journey, mm -hmm. but it really was his own journey unfolding um, that happened without me really having any direct um, influence in terms of I wasn't telling him, okay, this is how to go about this, or this is what you should think or believe. It was literally his own um, journey that just kind of ended up unfolding. I think some some of it was impacted by witnessing mine. But the rest of my family, I've just noticed in general, like most people in my life are starting to see things differently. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really cool. Um, and I don't know if that has been an impact uh, because of me or it's just something that's naturally happening across the board on like the planet. On a, on a planetary yeah. level. Yeah. So when we talked about like spiritual teachers and some of the things to look out, look out for, yeah. um, one of those is like sexual abuse or taking advantage. One way I've noticed that a lot is um, I'll have clients because they've seen my plant medicine journeys on YouTube and they'll be like, hey, I'm really interested in doing this. Can you suggest a place in the US? And I always say no, because all the places I've gone to have been in Peru, mm -hmm. in Mexico, in Costa Rica, mm -hmm. and you're working with shamans who come from like lineage after lineage after lineage. They know how to protect the space. They know how to work with the medicine. They know the ikados to sing, right? Mm -hmm. And a few times, some of them have come back to me and been like, I didn't listen to you. I found some shaman in the US and they were like, sexual things happening and you know all these like weird things happening in the ceremony and i can't imagine going through that or seeing it while i'm on the medicine yeah so what what is your experience with that well first of all i think there's a lot of people are surprised to know that i haven't done much plant medicine at all um I haven't done ayahuasca. I'm not surprised. And I actually want you to do it. <laughs> I know. That's actually one of my questions. I was saving yeah. it for last, but I'll tell you now. Yeah. Like, I feel like watching you, there's just that last little, and it just is like a breakthrough. Yeah. And it's because like, you're, you're still, you're so like, you're a whole new person from who I met. Oh my God. Sorry. I'm totally divulging. Right? <laughs> Changing the subject. Right. But you were so in your masculine when we first met. Yeah. You know, and now you're so in your feminine. Yeah. And I am a really firm believer in like, not everybody should do plant medicine. Yeah. And I used to be like, when I, you know, first started doing it eight years ago or something, I was like, everybody needs this. Everybody needs this. Everybody should do ayahuasca. Everybody should wake up and see beyond the veil and get a glimpse. And now I'm like, not everybody needs this. This is yeah. intense. Yeah. But like with you, I do feel like it would be a breakthrough moment. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> because it's like, you can understand certain things logically but then to feel it and experience it is a whole different thing. Totally. Like to know in your brain that we're all one is one thing. But to like literally for six hours be sitting there be like, oh my God, I can't even see anything as separate from me. Right. It's like, you know, you eventually lose that when you come off the medicine. That's why people keep going back over and over. But right. the point is to like then, now, now you know what you're seeking. Totally. And now find it in yourself. But anyway, sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, I mean, I feel... I've had the intuition about this that my whole twenties would be spent navigating, expanding my consciousness naturally without substances. And for the most part, that's been the case. I did a video doing ketamine therapy, which was kind of random, but also really. How did you do the ketamine? In a lozenge. Oh, it's not the way, but okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's it, the opportunity presented itself and it's federally legal and yeah. i wanted to do a video about it at the time it was very much a think? trending topic and you know it was also something i was interested in experiencing in like a controlled environment there was a, a nurse and a therapist present as well um my experience of ketamine therapy i it was one of those things where i was like wow like this was very cosmic it felt like the alien cosmic realm was very present in my experience. It's not something that I was like, I'm going to do that again yeah. anytime soon. I'm not like, I need to do it again, you know? No, it was really intense um, to the point where I feel like I got what I needed and like, okay, yeah. I don't need to do that for a while. Now I have microdosed um, certain medicines um, sparingly throughout my 20s. 
I now that I just turned 30, I feel a big shift where mm. I feel very prepared in my psyche to start going in the plant medicine mm. psychedelic realm more. And I think that was important to me was having my brain fully developed, you know, and my consciousness like trained up and um, just intuitively it was what I felt like was right for my path. Good for you to and, like recognize that. Yeah, and I also feel similarly that I have never felt called to sit in ceremony um, in a place other than where the medicine naturally comes from and with the lineage that has been carrying it for centuries. So that's been really if important If you want to go to in me. October, I'm going. We really? Peru. 13 I think days. this might be the time. I'm not kidding. And, and you know what? Here's the yeah. thing. Okay. So I always speak at Rhythmia every year. Yeah, I go yeah. to Rhythmia. I take groups of people, you know, like whatever. It's an amazing experience. And I'm so grateful for them. But they told me this year, they're like, well, we're not doing our, we're like uh, cutting back on our teacher program. And yeah. they're just inviting more like influencer kind of people. But And I've already done like six videos with them. So it's like, you know. <laughs> so at the same time, because I'm getting requests nonstop like you do. Mm-hmm. There's this one place that had reached out a few times and it's called Aya Healing Retreats. Mm. And I was like, you know what? I really want my sister to do this with me. And I really want a Wait, friend your of sister? mine. Yeah. Okay, I've taken so, my brother and my mom. So me and my brother, Ace, have we want to do it together. Maybe you bring him. Whoa. Brother, sister. Should we do that? Brother, sister, brother, sister. Ah! Oh my God. I've been, that's what we've been calling in is Honestly, brother, sister. I have a call yeah. with him scheduled next week. Ace? The owner. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like my brother. <laughs> I didn't meet your brother. He's very cool. He was yeah. DJing your party. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was so nice. I had thanked him at the end. I was like, good music and Aww. like, thank you, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, uh, and I do think that that would be really cool. But the reason why I like this place and why I want to go, not only are you living with the Shabibo shaman, yeah. the Shabibo is where it came from. Yeah. There's no one power more powerful, I think, yeah. in that world yeah. than like my one experience that I had out of all of them with the Shabibo was by far the strongest. It was with mm -hmm. Blue and with Dakota. Yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> so this is with the Shabibo. But on top of that, what I really liked about it, why I chose it, because I don't know if I'll be sitting in ceremony. Mm -hmm. I haven't sat in one in two years and I've done like 30 already. I don't, I think... I, I don't feel like uh, it's calling me, yeah. but I really want my sister and my friend who's coming with me to both experience it. Yeah. And they have like seven different master plants, they call them, mm -hmm. that they work with in that retreat. Mm -hmm. And only one of them is a psychedelic. Mm -hmm. It's ayahuasca. But the yeah. others are all good for different things in your body. So the, the shaman will see what you need yeah. like oh you have energetic parasites or you need to literally clean your brain or your yeah. heart or your liver yeah. or whatever it is and so they'll give you this certain medicine you're taking baths in it you're mm -hmm. drinking brews and teas every day mm -hmm. so they're not only working on like uh mm -hmm. psychedelic medicine but like actual plant medicines that are just healing for you yeah so it might be like the one to do wow i mean that's exactly how i've always imagined mm. it is it is in Peru. Should we um, do it together? Yeah, dude. October. It's the first two weeks of October. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna check with Ace. Yeah, Whoa. yeah. Because we were we've been wanting to do it together. Let me know, and I'll bring yeah. it up to oh uh, the God. owner. Wow. Okay. It's going down. And you know what? In as soon as I turned thirty, I was like, "It's happening." Soon. That's so strange. Yeah. Because and why all of a sudden did I go to your thirtieth birthday when we haven't really hung out in a while? Hey, I just really quickly want to tell you about the necklace that I'm wearing. You might see me wearing it in a lot of these episodes. I actually give it to many of the guests too. They're from Lila Quantum Technology, and as you can see, there are little capsules inside that are supercharged with what they call quantum energy, and it's just like walking around with one of the full-sized infinity blocks with you wherever you go. So you can get those on the website too and be quantumly upgraded wherever you go. My astrology report, so I had Joni Patri, who's an astrologer on my mm -hmm. show last season. She was the final two episodes. Mm -hmm. And she's amazing. I recommend anybody go back and watch that. She's a Vedic astrologer. She goes by mm -hmm. Vedic astrology. Mm -hmm. And in her report for today, for everybody, for like the whole, is like the friendships and the people that you meet this week and that you get together, it's a lifelong thing. Like there's something that's happening wow. with like a bond is being created. So you never know. It could be like the start of like, then you come do this ceremony with yeah. me and yeah. you know, it's just like further deepening that bond. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible.
Wow. Oh, all right. So that was a complete tangent from... From inappropriate in- sexual advances. <laughs> 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 Sorry, continue. <laughs> but it all ties together that when you're trusting a facilitator, a space yeah. holder, a shaman, a healer with something so sacred and vulnerable, it's not something to take lightly. And it's I've experienced being in situations where I have been unsafe and violated. And that's, um, I, again, something to be aware of when you're getting into this space. And something I want to make sure people know to check in with themselves and, and to also just be very clear um, with boundaries and speaking that and yeah, I mean, what was your, can you talk a little bit about your situation and what happened to you? Yeah, I'll, I, I won't go into a lot of detail, but I was in a, a healing session with someone and I was, uh, it was sober, you know, it was, but I was put into like a trance through sound and vibration and music and meditation and body work. And there was no discussion of, this happened to me many years ago and I shut it out for a while. Like I didn't, I dissociated from it. And then I was just like, okay, I'm not going to think about that. Like spiritual bypass mm. myself, you mm. know, um, I'm like, oh, maybe it was my fault or, you know, and then it just is something that I've, it's been coming up a lot recently in conversations of other people having similar experiences. So I was in this trance like state, having body work done and there was no prior conversation and verbal conversation around like what was going to happen in a consent, like a consent conversation. And so then having experienced my body being violated without any verbal consent. And then when you're in a state like that, when you're already in a trance like state, which is in theta brainwaves, you're almost like asleep, right? Mm. Um, To pull yourself out of that and then just be like, this is not okay. It took like everything for me to do that. Like, because I knew it didn't feel right, but it took so much energy to like out of this state, be like, can you stop? You know what I mean? And it just left me feeling like this was not, this was inappropriate and Mm. irresponsible and um and i've heard stories from so many women where similar things are happening to them in these healing sessions it's just like yeah so i think it's very important when you're going into these situations to know who you're who you are working with and like feel very safe with them and to also make sure if that conversation um i didn't even know that conversation would have been something that needed to happen right why would you even think that so that was gonna be my next question is what would you do differently now knowing what you know and having experienced what you have experienced how would you handle that differently today yeah i think um i think i handled it the best way i could have at, at the time but I did say to the person, like, this is, you need to really take this seriously if you're doing this kind of work, mm. you know? And and I'm happy that I said that, but I think it needed to be even more clear that that was, like, not okay. I kind of just let it fly under the radar mm. and just, like, I just shut it down and dissociated. And it was, like, I, at the end of the thing, I was, like, this was, like, not. But I was, now, like, the woman I am today would have been, like, no, like this was this was inappropriate, and I would have been able to speak my voice in a more powerful way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Oh, see, this is why I feel like the plant medicine too, because that'll come up. Right. And you might even in your head or out loud just start saying everything that you would have said then. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that, things like yeah. that happen in ceremony. You'll start, you'll hear somebody screaming and the next day you're like, are you okay? And they're like, yeah, why? I feel amazing. Like, you know, yeah. to you on the outside looking and that's why they always tell you don't interfere or if you come with a family member sit in opposite sides because you're going to want to help if you see them crying or whatever. Mm -hmm. But they could be having an experience that doesn't at all look like what you're seeing on the outside. Yeah. Like they could look like they're like, oh, like reliving something horrific. But on the inside, they could just be having a party, like letting it go. Yeah, you need to let people go through their their process and their yeah. experience. Um, you know what's similar, actually? Yeah. Um, you have a video about dark room retreats. Mm -hmm. And I feel like with Aya and, you know, all these plant medicine ceremonies, they are bringing up a lot of those same things that you can experience, you know, on uh, with breath work or with a super deep meditation or yoga practice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is why I do Kriya Yoga every day. Mm -hmm. But for you... Like, was that dark room retreat? Did it have anything like that come up? Yeah, yeah. Or do um, you want to describe to people what it is? Yeah, the darkness therapy, dark room retreat is you go into a pitch black soundproof cave. In this case, I was at Sky Cave Retreats in Oregon. So it's underground and it's just a small, simple room and it's completely light proof and soundproof. And wow. you stay there for many days. In my case, I did five days. And it was a hundred hours total. What do they suggest? How many days? Like three to five days. Okay. Yeah. Um, they've had people stay in for 30, 40 days and oh. they will say they don't see any extra benefit from okay. going longer. Um, but yeah, I didn't know. I was really scared what would happen to my psyche in there, you know? Yeah. Um, and it's so interesting because out of all of the things that I've done, like going into these crazy situations, my mom was the most worried about the darkness. Really? She was freaking out. You're in like, like a safe I know. I yet. don't know. Like, you know people, what it is? People yeah. are afraid if they can't reach you. Yeah. I, I know right. I've noticed that, like with my mom too. But, you know, Sadhguru yeah. says something that I really thought was funny. He's like, you could get drunk, pass out on the street, and you could rob a bank, you could whatever, and your parents will still be okay with it because they're like, it's okay, come home, my baby, I'll take care of you, you know? Mm -hmm. He's like, but if you tell them you're doing a 10-day whatever retreat, they lose their minds because they're like, then they know they've lost you. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no coming back from that. Yeah, it's like she was afraid she was going to lose me to the darkness or something. Yeah, but not even like yeah. lose you, but who you were. Like, you might yeah. come back as another person or whatever. Like, that, mm -hmm. you know, it's like they're afraid that mm -hmm. they might lose Something. That's so true. Yeah, like the fear of going crazy or yeah, your exactly. psyche altering yep. into a different state. And um, I know people have had experiences where their natural DMT will get activated in the darkness and it is very psychedelic. I didn't necessarily have an experience like that, but I had um, a whole process of, a, of an experience where I was definitely releasing. Um, and I released a lot through sound when mm -hmm. I was in there. Um, but on the other side of that release, I felt, yeah, some of the deepest bliss I've ever felt and the deepest meditations I've ever had was wow. in that dark room. And I just didn't want it to end. Um, by the end of the time when I was coming out, I wanted it to continue. I was like, wow. I can just be here forever. Isn't it crazy how like in the beginning of something, you're always like, because I'm even, I'm getting ready to do a five day fast while doing a master plant oh cleanse God. and i haven't done a fast in like three years because i lose weight so easily that mm -hmm. i'm just like okay i can't fast you know mm -hmm. and now i'm getting ready to do a five day water fast which i know you've done you've done five days right yeah i did and it's like toward yeah. the end you're like i could do this forever but at the first or maybe not no not for me it was no oh. and i've learned with fasting the female body responds yes. wildly differently it's like dr mindy do you know dr mindy pels mm, okay. uh, i've spoken at a few conferences with yeah. her her whole uh industry her whole brand everything was built around helping women fast yeah, yeah. and knowing how to do it based on your hormones and your time yeah. of the month and right. your the moon cycles like everything mm. it's like there's so many things to take into account it's not like a guy to just be like no i'm gonna not eat for five days totally and men have a 24 hour circadian rhythm clock and women have the infradian rhythm which is our hormonal cycle that is aligned with our moon cycle and the actual moon yeah and that is something that has been revolutionary for me to understand because you remember when you first met me i was like super into the biohacking stuff oh yeah all the biohacking research is on the male body yes and it's 
doesn't. And it's changing I was, a little bit now, but yeah, yes. right. Well, it is now. Yeah, yeah. It's shifting because people are now aware that that maybe that's and not a good idea. And there's more women biohackers now yeah. who are like taking the lead and being like, I want to know this. Totally. Yeah. But as you said, when you met me, I was super in my masculine. I was like super into the biohacking and I was not understanding how to work with this feminine body that has like a whole cycle to it. And now um, I feel like it's changed my life, like to feel that I'm aligned with the cycles of my body. Like I know when I know it's when it's my follicular phase. I know when I'm ovulating. I know when my cycle's coming. Like I can feel it. I know it. it's tracked. I'm aligned with the moon. It's incredible because you un then understand that, um, okay, this time of the month I need more rest. This time of the month I have more energy. Um, this is when I shouldn't be fasting. This is when I should be doing harder mm. workouts. This is when I should be doing gentler, more um, yoga or flow or, um, yeah, it's it's really changed my life to understand that because um, often, yeah, women like feel shame for not having the same energy levels at all times of the month, but that's ridiculous. Like, how totally. could we? We're not supposed to have the same energy levels at all times. <laughs> God, that's so important to know. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've had this conversation <laughs> on the podcast with women. I mean, it's like, <laughs> yeah. like, look how happy you are even just thinking about it, right? Because you're like, oh my God. It's like, imagine you living in a masculine society yeah. that's caught, and then you feel like, oh, I should be this way. Right. You know? And by the way, and I don't don't just mean man women because yes, women like with your body physically, yeah. But also, men should be a little more feminine and masculine, like have the balance. Mm -hmm. And women need to have some of the masculine and feminine and have that balance. Yeah. You know, obviously, be more um, in tune with what your physical body is needing. Mm -hmm. Of course, so like mm -hmm. I'm gonna be more into my masculine, you'll be more into your feminine. But to be able to balance the two when you need it. Yeah. It's so important. That's been like the biggest theme of my life currently is right? bal balancing those energies. Dude, me too. And you know, yeah. it's really interesting. God, I shouldn't even, I've never really talked about it. There's like things like, I don't know if you have this or not, but um, with my videos, there's some things I've seen like miraculous, like people bending spoons with their yeah. eyes and like, yeah. and mm -hmm. floating while they meditate. And yeah. I've never documented them. There mm. are things that I'm just like, this is for me. Wow. This is my practice. This is what I'm doing. This is not, I'm not doing this for, because there's like a level of theatrics totally. when you're doing it on camera or a level of producing. Totally. Right. Where I'm doing it, but in my head, I'm like, is he getting this? Is he getting it? Like, you know, <laughs> totally. where is he standing? Like, and then that takes you out of that. So there's so many things that I've done. Actually, probably the deepest things I've done have never been on camera. Yes. Yeah, I completely resonate with that. Do you it's, have some of that? Yeah. Um, it's interesting because I feel like I unexpectedly some of the most transformative things that have happened to me have been documented, but completely unexpected. Mm. Like I had no idea that's that would what be was going to happen. Oh, yeah. yeah. And so people ask me sometimes about that part of like the authentic expression, like, well, there's some level of performance to this, right? Like, are you actually able to be fully authentic and expressed 100% honestly? And I feel like I've been the most expressed in a lot of my videos. Like, mm. I feel like I've been able to tap into this deeper level of expression in some of these videos that I've documented. Like, again, just kind of unexpectedly. Wow. Um, but in terms of yeah profound deep experiences yeah like a lot most of that stuff is not documented because you can't you can't plan that. yeah totally it's, <laughs> it's like just... when you're out in the stars camping and then all of a sudden bam you know yeah but you know the reason i brought it up is because we talked about the masculine and feminine and the balancing this is the weirdest thing but i was at okay i asked for a, pro a personalized meditation from this incredible healer there's only two healers in the world that i go to okay there's a few that I'll like trust with my energy, but two that I'll go to, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. consistently. One of them is Gaia and she's been on my channel twice now. Mm -hmm. And she's from New Zealand. She's remarkable. Yeah. I've, I can't even explain what she does. It's, mm -hmm. it's like she'll tell you the past lives that you keep repeating, mm -hmm. why you're repeating them, the patterns that you keep repeating. Mm -hmm. And then you'll literally be like, I've literally done every single one of those things in this life. <laughs> You know, and yeah. she's like, and you're going to do this, 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 and this later. And it's yeah. not from a place of like psychic or predicting. It's from a place of like, I'm trying to help you break this pattern. Yeah. You do it over and over, you yeah. know, yeah. every lifetime you get cheated on by your wife at this age, you have two kids, this have like, and wow. you know, you need to break the cycle. You just get, or, or don't, but you're just going to keep repeating it until you do, wow. you know? So she'll just give you that perspective. But 
my whole point and my and the things she told me were wild but in this personalized meditation i asked for mm -hmm. she basically says that like when i turn 38 i'll start performing miracles for people wow. and blessings and she's like it's not the energy work that you're doing now it's a whole nother thing and i totally see it it's happening in my life little by little there's still a few more years till i turn 38 uh, yeah. but um the interesting thing, my whole point to this is that I went to a retreat at Isha Institute, Sadhguru's Institute. Mm -hmm. And I had like a pretty profound experience where I asked for a certain healing of something. And then all of a sudden that same day, I meet a doctor randomly in Nashville who tells me how he just healed somebody of this thing that I didn't even bring up. Wow. And so now I'm like on this whole thing. But yeah. there was at the Institute, there was like this uh, maybe series of 12 paintings that tell a story of Shiva and Parvati mm. Parvati? Parvati mm. <laughs> coming together mm. and form it's like the masculine and feminine merging mm. and becoming mm -hmm. into the one mm. miracle mother mm. and I, I had ordered that personalized meditation before I went to Nashville three mm. weeks later was like a day after I had come back from Nashville I come back to LA and mm. I get a, an email from her assistant saying hey your meditation's done here it is and it was all about Shiva and Parvati coming together, mm. forming the, what she calls the miracle mother. And she's like, you're going to embody that. And that's how the miracles will happen. Wow. They're gonna, you're going to basically birth them mm. like a mother would. You're birthing these miracles yeah. for people. You yeah. know? Yeah. And she's like, she literally channeled. I mean, I had literally the day before been so wow. consumed by these paintings of Shiva and Parvati coming together. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, my meditation is all about that. Mm. The synchronicities that, yeah, you could never plan to yeah. document some and of how these wild And how would you? Like, how can that be documented? Yeah, no. I've had similar experiences where it's just like, okay, like, God is talking directly to me. There's no, this, there's no way this is a coincidence. Yeah. It's wild. Uh, yeah. And actually, that, by the way, back to the dark room <laughs> yeah. retreat. Uh, is the owner's name Scott? Mm -hmm. I think, right? Yeah, he reached out to me on Instagram. Yeah. And I didn't even um, know that you can, like, look at your hidden messages. Yeah. And I went through, finally, somebody showed me in January, and I had, like, hundreds of hidden messages I had never seen. And one of them was from him. A oh, year later, wow. I saw it, and he had wow. invited me to the retreat. So I might want to do you that. You have to go. Yeah? You should definitely go. It's... Yeah. Because, you know, we all look at, like, outside for things, but it's, like, it's if you just go within... Yeah. It's there. It's one of the most profound modalities that I've experienced mm. in my entire journey. And it has had a lasting impact on my ability to be present. Mm. And it helped me get clear on what my soul's core desire really is, which is presence. Yeah, there's a DJ. Um, do you know DJ Noah Aeon? His I name mean, is Pavel. Yeah, okay. I don't really know. But you know, maybe yeah, of yeah, him or yeah. something. He's like at retreats and stuff. And okay, but he got his name. He changed it. He like he was a corporate guy and became a DJ and like new age everything from doing a darkroom retreat. Wow. And the name came to him and the idea and how he would do it, wow. like everything. Yes, yeah, so much clarity comes through when we're just able to slow down, be present, and clear the noise. Mm. It's just like lightning strikes of wisdom <laughs> <laughs> so sky yeah are you a witch <laughs> <laughs> i watched a lot of your very witchy yeah. videos yeah <laughs> you know it's such an interesting question i feel like i resonate with the archetype of the witch but i don't know if it's like i'm like i'm a witch people my friends call me they say that I'm witchy, you know? Um, mm -hmm. And this bracelet, it says Skywina. <laughs> Is that your witch name? That's my, that's my witch name that my friends named me. Whoa. My friend Nikki, she got this for me for my birthday. So oh, Nikki. Nikki. Nikki's she, a sweet girl. Yeah, she called me Skywina. She said that's Is your... Is that a unicorn on it too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's she cool. She said this is, your witch, this is your witchy alter ego, Skywina. Mm. So when I would... Um, do moon ceremonies with my friends and just naturally you know guide us into an experience or facilitate their like wow like that's skywina you know and um so i feel like i have a witchy side and i've always resonated with the witch from growing up the town next to salem massachusetts which Did is you? where i'm from yeah 
So I grew up going to Salem like my whole life. It's I, I, I'm from Beverly, Massachusetts, which is the right next door. Can I go with you one day? Of course. It's I've always wanted to okay. go to Salem, Massachusetts. Halloween is it is so it's incredible. wait a minute. It's like real life. My favorite movie is Hocus Pocus. Dude. And that's like it literally is Halloween in actually Salem. Actually, like that is what Salem is. Is it, it was shot there too, and. Um, on Halloween, I have a video actually about Salem being like that in real life Halloween town. And there's the costumes and you'll see the Sanderson sisters. You're going to see at least like three sets of Sanderson sisters on Halloween <laughs> in Salem. It's amazing. Wait, it's amazing. hold on. Yeah. Can we do two weeks of Aya? The and then go to weeks, And then do yeah. that. We got too much to do in one month. I My mean, cats are going to be pissed. Where, where, <laughs> like, where have you been? I mean, oh, whoa. let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, but okay, I, but I not that whole witchy like commercial no, side of it. Talking yeah, about like but the, the stuff real, you've done, right? Like, in the yeah, castles sure, in Ireland sure, and things sure. like that. I mean, the real witches are totally present in Salem. There's many practicing witches. Really? Where, yeah. Laurie Cabot is the um, the oldest witch in America and Salem's official witch. And I grew up going to her shops and just like super intrigued and do by, you feel like she's like the real deal yeah wow yeah um and i've been trying to do a video with her she's really hard to get a hold of seriously yeah she is i thought like, that would be totally something no, she did with you she's so hard to, we've tried but which is it will great happen that's kind of cool i like that it's gonna happen you know but in my adult life the witch archetype is something that i resonated with as a child and growing up in salem i was always very um, connected to it, but I feel like I definitely shunned it and felt scared by it because of the media and the way witches are portrayed and the propaganda of that. Like I totally just shut it out until my adult life when I did a video in LA with LA's real life witches, you know, and then that was my first like opening to, oh, I think this is different than what I I've been taught this mm -hmm. is or um, spending time with these these real witches of the city and just feeling like, oh, yeah, this is I can see like that what they're doing is not evil or this. There's something more to this. And then um, a witch named Mia Magic saw that video and she's like, you need to do a video, you know, about what I'm doing, which You've is helping a few with her. Yeah, yeah. which is helping women really like come into their power um using um using this ancient magic and wisdom of of the witch and, and embracing this archetype and um she really helped me she was like a huge she's like a witch mentor to me you know like helping mm. me expand in that um part of my life and i went to her retreat in scotland and um it was yeah like yeah the the magic that's happening is not yeah, it's not what you would think of as, okay, we're going to like cast this spell over a cauldron. It's like deep, like inner healing work. Can you explain, like show a little, I mean, I've yeah. seen that video, I think, but maybe. Yeah, in the video, you can see that there is a certain ritual that we did in a meadow um, where I had like a full throat chakra healing activation where um, I felt kind of this like pain of my voice being stifled. You know, I feel like a lot of women have this experience of feeling like your voice doesn't matter or um, has been shut down. Like I've had that experience throughout my life. And I had like specifically like an early memory of singing and then being told to shut up and like, you know, that kind of thing where it's so my voice have having been, um, yeah, just not feeling heard. So I was really. muscle testing while you talked. Yeah. And it said that I asked, were you, um, have you been a witch in a past life? It went strong. Yeah. And I said, um, is that why you decided to live, you know, to be arranged to be born near Salem, Massachusetts in this life? It went yes. Wow. Um, I asked a few things that said no, but I'm only going to say the yeses. And then the yeah. other one that was a yes was, um, is that why you're like, is that why you connected with that in this life and to heal those parts of you? Because maybe you were like killed for it or something, you know? Yeah. Because Guy actually told me about a life where I was, all of them were men. <laughs> one of them, I was a woman. And that mm -hmm. one, mm -hmm. I was a witch. But you know, what we consider a witch. I was healing yeah. people with herbs. Exactly. That's what I was doing. I had herbal remedies. Exactly. People would come in with like this ailment. I'd like take this herb, take that herb. Mm -hmm. And they purposely, a group mm -hmm. of men mm -hmm. changed it with poison. 
so that they would have something. Mm. And so when I, the next person came to me, they died from it. Yeah. And it was actually one of the people who did it, um, who wow. switched it with poison. They like sent him in and be like, hey, it's just going to make you sick, but you know, we'll use that. And it actually killed him. And they uh, skewered me to death, basically. Oh and God. I had two kids. Oh my God. Like baby kids. Yeah. Wow. And, I, and those stories have been coming up with yeah, a lot yeah. of my guests, like specifically witchy lives where they were killed for it. Right. And so for me, what that represents is like, it was like silencing the feminine power you know totally i mean there was we forget that there was a mass genocide of witches in the early 1400s 1500s in europe mm. like before the salem witch trials wow. there was thousands of women that were killed it was 80 percent of and these cats victims too, by the way. were uh, and I can't remember if it was because yeah. of uh, they thought they had this virus and it turned out, no, yeah, they, were, yeah, yeah. they were preventing the disease. They were killing all the rats which right, carry the virus. Right, but right. they killed like millions yeah. of cats. Yeah. And there was a, some kind of connection, I don't remember how, where they associated it with them being evil and witchy. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I mean, all of these like parts of our current understanding of the, the folklore of these archetypes and these symbols, it all has roots in you know, these, this, this type of history. So, um, yeah, I, I grew up like learning about the Salem witch trials was like a big thing that we learned in school because we were right there. It was like a huge part of, I don't know, our history classes and going. Kind of interesting. And, yeah, it's super interesting. But that trickled from the fear that had started, you know, in the European witch trials. And so I think that, um, yeah, there's like a deep um, ancestral trauma for anyone who experienced that or in a past life experienced this. And it's part of why there hasn't been like a safety to claim that. Because, and for people watching, it's not, the past life is not the past. Yeah. Time is a construct of the mind. Totally. So at some level you're experiencing that now, mm -hmm. whatever it was, mm -hmm. whatever. So whenever you're having, Oh, I had this past life, that past life, this future life, they're all now. It's not one yes. happened here, happened there. They're all, all happening, happening now. now. Simultaneously. And so when you clear it yeah. from one life and you heal it, you're healing yourself now. Because that totally. part of you is still, it's still in you. Yeah. It's, it's a new body, same, right. but the, the programs are still there. Yeah, all happening simultaneously in the present moment. <laughs> in yeah. the infinite present moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Mia and I joke that I'm a baby witch. So you asked mm -hmm. if I'm a witch and we we would say yeah, I'm a baby witch. I have a baby broom and I'm like do you? I, I do. <laughs> Literally, I did a ceremony last night with my friend Grace. Wow. And my baby broom was there and we did our uh, a little full moon ceremony. The full moon was a few days ago, but we've been wanting to do that. So that's what we did last night. That's so nice. Yeah. That's cool they did it with the full moon. Yeah. Because I I have a friend recently who's like been just intuitively on her own connecting with her menstrual cycle she's been saying with the moon mm -hmm. she's all of a sudden noticing the correlation totally yeah totally like my body is so linked with the moons i know when my cycle is coming based on the moons um yeah um and i i feel our body our body is mostly water and the moons are literally affecting all the water on the planet for everybody for everybody yeah. and if we are mostly water how can we think it can affect the ocean and not us totally by the way i have something kind of witchy for you yay i don't know why i saved it till the very end yay. <laughs> i'm so excited what is this so this is from my amazing sponsor Lila yay. Quantum. but oh this God. is actually this is gold plated wow. but the inside is the magic like oh inside these spheres that are inside the capsule are wow. quantumly charged wow. and when you hold it and when you carry it if you put your intentions mm -hmm. into them you can even write it on a p i do this i don't know i don't know if they say to do it i'll sometimes write in a little piece of paper and put it in there and i'll shut it in there but also the studies show like when yeah. people wear these yeah that your heart rate variability evens out on its own and they have third-party double-blind studies with universities wow so i'm so excited about this i because i have the aura ring and i can track my heart rate variability so i'm gonna track and see if see. anything changed when you yeah. put this on so totally. you'll know the time right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there you go oh my gosh thank and you this matches is your goal it's so perfect this is so cool <laughs> and also super mystical and witchy like right? little like mystical purple spheres like that i'm just like carrying around yeah and i love that you're already wearing gold i know it actually goes so it's well perfect 
And now you just be quantumly charged. Well, I feel like I've been needing something like this because, you know, as a creator, we're just around technology so much and everybody's around technology constantly now. And I just feel like I've been needing like something like this. to. And the studies show yeah. it mitigates EMF. You'll yeah. see. It. Yeah. It harmonizes like the space. So, so you know what they did? This is awesome. They actually put people's hands in the block version of that. So I have all over my place, you'll see like actual blocks yeah. and they are the, they are that basically in, in block form. So they yeah. structure like your home basically. Mm -hmm. And if you put your hand in that before mm -hmm. and after they'll, they'll take the photo of your blood. I forgot what it's called yeah. when they do that. It'll be like stacked up and coiled before because of the EMF and the Wi-Fi routers and all that. Mm -hmm. Then they'll take a photo of it after your hand's been in it for 10 minutes, fully straightened and aligned and wow. like uncoiled. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're this is Enjoy. so <laughs> cool. I love it. It's so oh, I love you. And I'm so you glad too. you came on. Thank you for having me. This was so fun. So fun. And yeah. you're like hopefully kind of getting into like podcasting, right? I feel like that's what's coming is that transition to the longer form conversations I'm really craving to have. Yeah. It's really yeah. nice. It's authentic. You can like take your time. I know from my background, whether it was TV or making YouTube videos, mm -hmm. if somebody talks for like 20 minutes, I'm using a minute here, totally. 30 seconds here. But like, this is just like a full on conversation that you get to sit in on. I love it. Yeah. It's such a great format. And thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. Make you believe that you really choose it. Uh, ever since I wrote my goals down with the pen, my dreams and reality are both them blending in. I just hope that in the end, my debt don't extend me on my dividends. If it did, I'd have to keep pivoting. Turn the other chicken down another dose of adrenaline. I don't need to pretend to live a life that I never did. Cause I'm right where I need to be. You can see from the work that I'm putting in. If I'm ever blown perp, I don't want no send a lesson coming from the government. 2020 came and went with the blur and it's ironic. God has made me sick with these words in my driver's